Oh, Bernard, uh, a wonderful sight, wonderful sound of all those Spitfires. Yeah. But the logistical nightmare begins, doesn't it? Because uh, every single one of those aircraft starts to heat up from the time they move. And uh, the flying director has got to make sure he gets them in the air pretty quick. And I think most of them have got about three minutes before they have to shut down. The uh, thing is that on the Spitfire, the, the engine uh, gives out very much heat. And, and so you have the radiators under the wings. and. Uh, when you're taxiing, there's not enough uh, air stream from the propeller to uh, cool down uh, and, and, and give uh, the possibility to bring the engine back to normal temperatures. So when you're taxiing, it heats up. And so now on the runway, so you have to get to go quick, to, to go fast. Uh, you don't want to waste your time on the ground, either you boil the engine. So uh, we have two sets of Spitfires now on uh, the runways. Uh, we have the big ones with the Griffin engines. Uh, they, are, they are big engines, 35 liter V12, Rolls Royce, and they are the latest mark of Spitfires as uh, the, the aircraft which flew by the end of the war. And uh, four Griffins and uh, the rest uh, in total, we have 11 uh, spits, and uh, the rest is uh, equipped with Merlin engines. They are the small ones, and they are going to uh, fly in two elements. One will use the grass runway closer to us for high speed passes, and then after that, you just pull up and you do a, a turn on top of the pull up, and you come down again at high speed, and while the others. Uh, Merlin engine Spitfires will go above the secondary axis, which is uh, farther from us, uh, near the uh, over the hard surface runway, and uh, they will perform very gentle and very elegant. Uh, lazy eights, uh, using much less speed at the bottom of the. Am I right in saying that the? Prop spin in a different direction for the different uh, the Griffin and the Merlin go in different directions. The problem is that it changes a lot in terms of piloting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, and and the problem is that well on the Spitfire it's less uh, important than on some American aircraft, for instance a Mustang, the P51, because a Mustang has a, a metal propeller which is heavier, and these huge propellers bolted to big engines are in fact giant gyroscopes. And, and if it's a light prop, like on the Spitfires, which is made of, of wood, and so lighter than the metal props, the gyroscopic effects are less important. And so the aircraft doesn't tend to, to, to go sideways and of course, when the prop is uh, turning in clock is turning clockwise, it will take you uh, in one direction, and if it's counterclockwise, it will take you in the other direction. But anyway, you have uh, potentially you have a problem because your aircraft doesn't want to go straight on takeoff, contrary to the jets, which are, as everybody knows, made for kids. And uh, the jets, well, you just push the throttle and the thing goes straight, like an arrow, and, and that's it. While on a propeller driven aircraft like these, things are different. Piloting again, and here we go. Take off, Griffin engine first.
the bone now and they're going to turn right and uh, go on a racetrack circuit behind us uh, before uh, coming back to open the show. Everybody's in the air. All the gears, landing gears are retracted normally. And uh, we got 11 Spitfires flying, which is in itself an event. It's half of the world's population of Spitfires. We will see this afternoon plenty of uh, remarkable uh, aviation designs flying. Among them, uh, the P-38 brought by the Red Bull company and uh, the P-38 is uh, the, the designer of the P-38 was a man uh, quite remarkable. His, uh, his name was Kelly Johnson. He was uh, uh, the son of uh, Swedish immigrants who had uh, moved to America and uh, he was barely 26, 27 years old when he designed the P-38 which is probably one of the most beautiful ships in the sky and uh, one of the first aircraft to reach compressibility and then the problems associated with the sound barrier. And uh, Kelly Johnson was so gifted that at the time they used to tell about him, he was a wizard kid, and uh, at Lockheed in California, in Burbank, in Los Angeles, they used to say that he was seeing the wind, which is quite a compliment for an aircraft designer. But when you'll see later this afternoon the P-38 flight, well, think about that. The man who designed it was barely a kid and, uh, and a quarterback. He played for American football too, and he was a mean player and uh, he was said to be able to see the wind, which is much better than in any kind of computer. All these aircraft are flown by people, most of them are, uh, there are plenty of professional pilots in, in the gang here, but, but some are absolutely not professional, spy, professional pilots and they are just uh, very gifted people who worked a lot to be able to uh, fly these aircraft, which are very demanding, which are uh, not the easiest uh, part of aviation in terms of uh, requirement for flying ability. And uh, some of them, for instance, uh, the man who will be uh, closing the team of Spitfires comes from Argentina, and uh, Maxi Gainza. And uh, he's a businessman, he's an aviation nut, but above all, the late James Gilbert, who was probably one of the greatest aviation writers of the 20th century and who had uh, invented Pilot magazine, uh, James Gilbert had uh, decided that this Argentinian uh, was really a gifted writer. And uh, Maxi wrote for Pilot magazine uh, many pieces and uh, he even uh, was awarded an uh, Aerospace Journalist of the Year award by the World Industry uh, for some of the pieces he had uh, written in Pilot magazine. So this is the kind of people you s you, you'll find in this aircraft. You'll find, uh, you'll find professional pilots too, of course. <laughs> for instance, there is one taxiing now about the Bearcat of the, flan the fighter collection. His Highness, because he's the boss here in terms of aviation, is a chief pilot for Flying Legends. Pete Kinsey, airline pilot, glider pilot, mountain pilot, pilot, ex exceptional pilot, he's flying many different things. And uh, behind the pilots are the teams of engineers and mechanics. And uh, there is one saying in the French Air Force, which is a good one. From time to time, we do have some nice things over there. And that saying says that uh, an aircraft belongs to his mechanics. 
who very gently and kindly lend the aircraft to somebody else to fly it. They call it a, call this man a pilot, but uh, with one requirement, bring it in one piece. But the aircraft belongs to the team of mechanics who takes care of it. And so it's a good saying. It's worth remembering. Of course, during the war, Bernard, these guys we're talking about were very few of them were professional pilots. Very no, no. Most of them most. came from all walks of life and were trained yeah. in a very quick time. And, and most of them never had a driver's license. No. They right. had not driven a motorized vehicle. They, some of them, family... Uh, well, that's it. They learned to drive after they'd learned to fly. Yeah, yeah most of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, statistically, uh, most of them had not driven a car. And then, but they were flying hurricanes, Spitfires, or whatever, some big four engine bombers, and, and that was a different period from now. Today, we are, we seem to be overly prudent.